What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another tutorial video for 5M. This will be the updated version on how to create a 5M server in 2021. This video will be replacing the previous couple of videos I created and files I had on my Discord for your uh, ready to go servers. Uh, the guys over at TX Admin and 5M did a fantastic job um, making it very easy and user friendly just to create your own server using TX Admin. So that's the way I'm going to show you how to do it. And going forward, that will be the way. This should be the final way on how to create your own 5M server unless you go to complete custom route. But if you're just starting out, this should be the final updated version we will need since 5M and TX Admin did such a fantastic job, um, including servers in TX Admin itself. So what you're going to do is go ahead and go into the uh, description down below and click on the very first link. It'll bring you to this website and go ahead and download the latest recommended artifacts. Uh, don't worry that the numbers for the latest recommended and the actual latest is different. That just means they came out with a bunch of updates, but they did not um, bug test it yet and things like that. The latest recommended is the one you want because you know it's going to work flawlessly. It'll create a little download. Make sure you have 7-zip, WinZip, WinRAR, something like that to be able to extract these files. We're going to go ahead and open that up and close out, out of, close out of our browser since we don't need that currently. So now we have to create a couple of folders. So on our desktop, let's go ahead and create a folder called YouTube server. You can name this whatever you wish. Just keep in mind that you cannot put any spaces in a name because it'll mess things up. Open that up and inside of here, let's create another folder called server, just like that. Now, inside of the server folder is what everything gets extracted into. So go ahead and highlight everything and put it right into that server folder. Now, the steps in this video are going to be slightly different than from my previous video, but you're going to see the sim similarities. So since that's all extracted, we can close out of this folder here, open up the server folder, and we're going to look for a file called FX server. It'll stand right out because it's got that image right there. Go ahead and double click that. Now, this should open two windows. One, as you can see right there, my firewall um, pop-up. And it should also automatically open up your browser. There you go. It does this automatically, so just wait until they pop up. Your firewall may not pop up every time. If it does, accept it. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. It should pop up before the browser if it's going to pop up. So go ahead and just allow the access. There's nothing else you need to do. On the browser itself, you can see it's TX admin popped up. It says there's no SysInfex account linked, and that's what we're linking right now. It should autofill the pin. If it does not, for some odd reason, go back to this window here. You can see right there, your pin is located right there. Go ahead and make sure it's the same one and link the account. And then once you link the account, it'll bring you to the CFXRE website to log in. If you're already logged in, It'll just bring you right to the next screen and you don't have to log in again. And now you create an offline password. This does not need to be the same password as on the CFXR website, since this is technically an offline account at this point. So just create anything you can remember and click next. So right here, now we're going to go through the process of actually creating our server. Go ahead and hit next, name it whatever you want. We're going to name this YouTube server, hit next. Now, deployment type is where things get a little different. Before, in my previous videos, we selected local server data. That's where things are going to be different now because we're not bringing out our own files. We're going to use their templates, which you can see right here. It says recommended. We're going to use their templates to create the server. So when you click on that, you can see a couple of different things pop up. It's a fantastic thing. They did this. When they first started this, they had the base server and the Plume ESX legacy server. And they're starting to introduce, you can see there's a QBE course framework. They had the Zap hosting ESX pack. So they're really going all out to make sure this is as user friendly as it can get. So go through there, see which one you want. I currently don't have any videos on a QBE core framework, but they can come in the future if you guys want. The one I recommend is the Plume ESX Legacy. It's a lightweight ESX extended framework. It's got a lot of great resources in there and it'll be ready to go. Play with your friends. No issues. So go ahead and just click on that. And right here, it's going to ask you where you want to save your data. You can see it'll be put in the TXX, TX folder called Plume Legacy .base. Just leave it that way. We can fix things later if you have OCD. It's safe. 
and hit run deployer. Here you can see everything that's going to get downloaded. You can double check. You can just leave it. Just leave it. There's nothing you need to do. Hit next. Now right here we need to go ahead and get our license key. To get your license key, you're going to need your IP address. Um, I'm not going to show you in this video how to get your IP address. There's plenty of videos out there. Plus, I have a video that shows you how to do this. But if you click this key master button right here, it'll bring you to the key master website. Go ahead and log in. As you can see, I already have a bunch of um, keys here created. What you would do is create register key and just fill out with your name. Right here, you put your IPV, which you have to make sure it's your IPV4 address. It'll look something like to, you know, something like that. Just different numbers. So that's the one you're going to have to put there. If you home host, you'd be other and home hosted and just type local host here. Click I'm not a robot and generate. So it's very simple. I'm not going to do it just for the sake of time. I'm just going to activate one of my test keys right here. Open it up and I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And you can see this right here. That's not my actual IP address. That's an IP address for VPS I used previously. As you can see, this IP is not locked, the key, which means I can use this key on any computer, any VPS I want. I think going forward, all the new keys that you create are IP locked to your actual computer, so you can't share anymore. But if you want to do stupid stuff with that IP, go ahead. I don't even think that IP exists anymore. But you can see the example of how an IP, your IPv4 should look. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy my key and that's the one we're going to post right in there. Now right here is our database information. We're not going to change any of it. Localhost, we're local hosting. Password is root, uh, username is root. Password is nothing. Database, you can leave it just like that. You can change it whatever you want. I recommend just leave it the way it is. Now before we hit this, we got to make sure our database is running. So what you need to do is download XAMP. The link will be in the description. We're going to go ahead and just... I'll show you really quick, X XAMPP, download, I will have this link in the description for you. You download this latest one right here. The installation does take a little bit, I don't know why it's a small program, but go ahead and download it. Once it's downloaded, we can go ahead and run this. Let me start mine right up. It'll look just like that. So the first thing you need to do is go ahead and un under Apache and MySQL, make sure that there's no clickable, which is not okay. So just hit start and start hit allow access obviously and make sure they're both running so they're both running we're good to go let's hit run recipe there you go and now you just let us it do its thing you can see it's doing things here it's doing things over there you can close out of this make sure they keep running but you can see it's connecting to the database it's got it's query 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 the database which means the database connected and you can see right here we now have a successful file with resources in it and all the resources in there. There we go. Everything's good. Hit next. Here is our server.cfg, which is also located right here. You can just go ahead and look at this real quick. It shows you a couple of settings. Save and run server. There you go. Server starting up. You can minimize this window here. Do not close out of it. I'm going to go ahead and close out of every window now just so you can see. So right here is our server folder. And TX admin is how we actually run the server. Now, your very first startup, you're going to need to let it be. As you can see right here, there's a couple of red flags. It's resolving and fetching packages. Just let it do its thing. The very first time your server runs, it has to install a couple of additional things. Once it's done, it'll obviously tell you right there, done, 18 seconds. And there you go. Whenever you get a message like your server hitch warning, timer interval, you're good to go. So go ahead and restart your server now. You should go ahead. If I clear my console, everything's going to start right up with no issues. If there are any issues, they'll pop right out. You can see here, easy admin is outdated, which means that you would have to go ahead and update it right here. It gives you the GitHub. Um, I'm sure by the time you do the video, they will already have it updated. Okay, what we're going to do is go ahead and scroll up just to double check. You can see everything starts. As you can see, the AS, like I said, the AS, easy admin is outdated. Really nothing to worry about. Um, if you can update it right here, they give you the link. It gives you the update log. Most likely by the time you go ahead and do this, they'll go ahead and update that already. 
that's probably what some of those uh change logs are from the artifacts how they already have the new ones that are testing so most likely by the time you get to this will already be updated but you can see everything starts right up no issues um ignore the chat it, it always does that nothing to worry about absolutely nothing to worry about if your chat is messing up and for some reason it's not starting which it should later on just go to your cfg editor right on tx admin and make sure chat itself is being started by that you can go ahead and just come over here and type ensure chat just like that but honestly it's sh you shouldn't have any issues with that chat just likes to be pain in the ass it's just what chat does but TX admin from here on out is exactly the same. As you can see, it does say the version of TX admin is outdated. That is because we use the latest recommended build. And you can see the latest recommended build is not what they're suggesting. So it's up to you if you want to wait until the latest recommended build is the one they want you to install. Or you can just, I usually just go ahead and update it anyway because usually there aren't any bugs. It's 100% totally fine up to you the way you update your tx admin it's very simple so i'm going to go ahead and turn the server off confirm tx admin is you can run everything from um you will also still have we'll close out actually we'll go right here we need to go to 5m the server master this is the link that's in the description so to update your tx admin just go ahead and download the latest one It'll download it, open it up, and it's very, very easy. Go back to where you originally saved it in your server folder, and all you need to do is highlight, drag and drop everything in there, and replace what's already in there. That's it. It's going to search everything. It's going to ask you to go ahead and update or replace files, so to speak. So we're just going to go ahead and give this a minute right there. Replace all files. Give this just a second to go ahead and overwrite everything. And then we'll go ahead and start it right back up. Yeah, so give me. Why is it being a pain right now? Oh, because this window is still open. You got to make sure you close this window out. Just like that. Give it a second. It'll close itself out and try again. Now it'll overwrite everything. Now we updated our server. So we go ahead and close everything out now. Let's go ahead and look around a little bit. You can see this is our folder here on the desktop. Our TX admin is where our resources are right here. Our server CFG, our easy admin permissions, everything is located right in here. Our server right here is where you update your TX admin. And right here is where you start your server. So go ahead and double click that. It'll start your server right up. And now, even though you double click that, your server won't actually turn on. Well, maybe it does. Usually what it does, it brings up your TX admin, which... What you can do is go ahead and just go to localhost 4120. So we're going to go ahead and go to localhost 4120, which is your TX admin. You log in with your citizen effects or your offline username, whatever you did. And then there you go. You'll be able to go to live console. You can see everything started right up. And we go to the dashboard. You can see we're no longer outdated. Now I would go ahead and log in and show you everything in the server. Unfortunately, um, I, I am unable to play 5M for a little while. So videos going forward, I'll be able to show the videos, but I won't be able to showcase everything, which is very unfortunate because I know a lot of people look forward to things like that. But hopefully just showing how to get to that point will be just enough. If you need a video on TX admin itself and walking through all the features of it, uh, just let me know in the comments. I can go ahead and make sure to get in the comments and also let me know how these videos are going. Any suggestions, anything you want me to change, just let me know. You know, feedback's always appreciated. But yeah, there you go. This is your updated version on how to do your own server. Oh, one thing I forgot. Let's go ahead and double check the database. I want to show you where that was set up. So we remember examp. So let's go ahead and we open up this folder again. So under MySQL, go ahead and click admin. 
it'll bring you to this window. Now you can remember when we created it, it named it Bloom Legacy right here. As you can see, it automatically created it for us. Go ahead and click on that. You can see right here is your database. Very easy, very simple. It gives you everything. Let's say if you want to go to items, you go in here, you see all your items, you can edit it. Everything is right here, ready to go. You got to make sure every time you run the server, your database has to be running, which means your Apache and your MySQL have to be on. To stop your database, simply stop both of them. Keep in mind when you do that, your server will no longer work properly since it requires the database to work. So every time you go to turn everything on, first you turn on your database just like that. Then you go ahead, you start your server. But that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, again, get in the comments, let me know how I did, any suggestions. Um, again, this is the updated version and hopefully the final version on how to create your own 5M server. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.